Hoggensen and I work for uh, a consultancy company based here in uh, Oslo called Novanet. Uh, we are uh, mainly focused on .NET develop, uh, de development, so uh, you can go out and check out our blog if you would like that. So, let's take a look and uh, actually explain what is actually Nuke. So, Nuke is an open source build automation tool. And uh, you might sit here and ask, what is actually a build automation tool? Um, like normally when you're developing code, and uh, uh, let's say, for example, in Visual Studio, uh, you just build it through your IDE, and you are uh, basically letting Microsoft take control over your builds. By using an open uh, a build automation tool, you are actually taking control over your own builds. Um, Nuke, uh, when you write your build scripts, uh, you are actually write it in .NET, so using C Sharp to actually implement your builds. Uh, and it's really nice for really complex builds. Let's say, for example, you have uh, a lot of APIs, uh, some projects you want to pack down and publish on the NuGet feed. Uh, everything is possible by using Nuke. And uh, Nuke, as I will come into uh, later, uh, it will be added as a uh, .NET console application in your solution. And um, what does that actually mean for us? Uh, it means basically in your build, uh, you can use all the .NET core features uh, available. So if you like during your build process, uh, would like to uh, call an API, there is uh, nothing stopping you doing that. You also get like benefits like debugging. You can actually debug your build scripts. Uh, you get the IntelliSense and strongly type, which is really convenient. And uh, like uh, compared to other build automation tools like PS Cake and Cake, there are no magic strings. Um, another benefit of using Nuke is the fact that you get uh, consistency across projects and team members. Uh, uh, we have all been there when you like you write some code and it build and everything uh, turns out fine locally, but uh, when you actually push your code uh, to the server, it fails. But by using Nuke, you can get like you know for a fact that the build um, is will be the same uh, uh, locally uh, as well as on the server, <laughs> which is like to the next point, you get much more control over your builds. And also another great benefit is when you actually do your builds using Nuke, uh, it reduces the number of lines of YAML code, which is really great, um, and. Uh, it also has natively support uh, for all your favorite IDEs, Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio, JetBrains Rider. It's all supported, and there are extensions which adds a, bit, uh, uh, a little bit of functionality. So ta uh, let's take a step back and be honest with each other. We've all been there. The struggle of getting like the YAML files syntactically correct, um, like the commis commit history, you have like 30 commits just to get your pipeline up and running. Uh, and you might approach me and say to me that I don't hate YAML. And my answer to you will be, you don't hate YAML yet. <laughs> so, you might sit there and think, wow, Pet, this sounds really intriguing. How can I get started? Well, it's that simple. So, uh, the first thing you need to do is actually to install the global tool, a new global tool, using the .NET tool install command. After that's installed, you are, have like this nuke uh, colon setup command available. Uh, and after you have uh, completed the setup, you can just start using nuke by calling the new command. And nuke will, take uh, will actually perform the build. So the setup process is quite simple. Uh, you can see here, you just like pick your root directory, your solution, what version of nuke you would like to use. Um, um, I always use the default. Um, values, it works nice for me. And after you actually completed the setup process, uh, you will see like you have, uh, will get a build uh, project in uh, your solution. And uh, there's a lot of files there, and if you actually want to try get uh, uh, to use Nuke, uh, I would recommend like looking into it, because, but since we are kind of short on time today, I will uh, mainly focus on the build.cs file. So this is the first build.cs. Uh, when you completed the setup, this is what you will get in the build.cs file. So it's kind of just the template. As you can see here, we have these targets. 
uh, a target is compared to like when you're writing YAML, you have like these steps. Uh, you do a clean project, you do a restore, you do a build. This is the same, uh, but here it's is strongly typed. Uh, you can also see like uh, in the target clean, uh, you can have the uh, dot before. That's actually um, declaring the dependencies. So, uh, for example, if you would like to uh, you must uh, perform a clean before a compile. You can make that. Uh, you can say that the compile target is actually dependent on uh, the clean target. Uh, I've created a little uh, de uh, demo project. Um, I want to show you uh, uh, called Nuke. Uh, we we will take a look at the build.cs file. Um, I will show you a command which lets you actually uh, visualize the uh, dependency relations. And uh, at the end, I will actually run the build and show that to you. So let's take a look at this project. Oh, wow. OK. So here you can see my new project. Uh, there are several projects in it, actually. So uh, as you can see here, I have the build project, which is actually the nuke where I implement my build script. I have a test project uh, with some really nice tests. I do have two APIs, uh, which I would like to actually um, um, uh, publish uh, up to uh, my art, uh, as a publish as an artifact, as a zip file, uh, as well as a web project. And I also have this shared project, which I would like to actually pack into a NuGet file and probably eventually share it uh, and publish it on a NuGet feed. Oh. So let's take a look at uh, the build.cs file. So as you can see here, uh, there is a lot of code here. Uh, and don't worry if you don't understand it all. The main purpose is actually just showing how like, uh, uh, a fully implemented build could be. So uh, you can see here, uh, we have like, uh, different uh, um, uh, properties here, like the solution properties, which is actually, a, this is a built-in new feature, which uh, it, it makes it, it lets the, uh, let it know what is actually the solution. Um, Nuke is also great to use in your CI CD tools. It supports like GitHub Actions, Azure Pipelines, you name it. Uh, in my example, I use Azure Pipelines, uh, which also brings functionality like you can push uh, your NuGet files uh, to the artifact folder in uh, Azure DevOps. Um, I also, I, in this implementation, I basically have two lists. So I have this uh, applications list where I list uh, what applications I would like to uh, zip and push uh, as an artifact during my uh, build. And I also have this NuGet packages uh, list, uh, which is all the projects that I want to pack down to a NuGet file. Uh, all the basic steps are here. Uh, and you can also see like I have this dependency. So for example, restore is dependent on clean. Um, and uh, uh, like the main implementation of what you want to do in each target is basically uh, implemented in the executes. Executes, uh, as you can see here. I also wanted to show you that this is, as you can see, it's only C sharp. So you have like uh, the possibility of, for example, here, uh, just using a normal for each loop. You can use uh, if else conditions. You name it, you can do everything uh, you can do in normal C sharp. Um, so as you could probably see, uh, there's a lot of targets, and there are uh, there are dependency relations between them. Um, but Nuke actually has a really great uh, command that you can use to actually uh, visualize these uh, dependency relations. So uh, if you run the run uh, the Nuke dash plan command, it will take some time, uh, and you will get this. And then you can see uh, what is actually happening, what are the steps of your builds, and you can see uh, which targets are dependent on the other targets. And uh, when you're really happy with your uh, implementation and you're ready to let try actually running the build, it's quite simple. Uh, you can uh, do the new command uh, as I 
uh, probably should have said, you have like this main method here. So if you just run nuke without uh, actually targeting a target, uh, the nuke will run uh, the target, which is um, um, uh, said there. Like in this example, it's the compile. But if uh, in uh, what I will show now, I will show you uh, the published target. Because as you could see here, when running the published targets, uh, if you like hover over it, you can see all the targets which are going to be run. So let's give it a try. Uh, let's pray to God that this will work. <laughs> I had some problems just before this presentation, so yeah, it's looking fine. So as you can see, it's uh, doing all the steps, now doing some compiling, running all the tests, packing uh, the one share project I had in my solution, and it's published all the uh, applications which I have in, uh, had um, added to that application list. So we could just give it some time. And eventually, after like the build uh, is finished, you get this nice overview. And I also have added some reports here. Uh, I added Minver just for versioning. So I'm ver uh, doing some versioning on like the web project. And you can also see how many packages that have been packed to a Nugget file, and also the application which have been published. Uh, and when you actually want to do this in your pipeline, and as I stated earlier, uh, it reduces the amount of lines of YAML you can write. So let's take a look at uh, the YAML file for this project. The, uh, this is everything. So basically from line eight to down is basically where the magic happens. So basically I'm just calling like this. Uh, the build CMD file is actually being added to your project when you uh, perform the, the setup. And you can actually just um, uh, say to that uh, CMD file what kind of target you want to target. So this is really nice. Just having to write like a couple of lines of YAML. OK, let's see if I can get back here. There we go. So what are the key takeaways here? Well, uh, the fact that you can write and like define your builds uh, using C Sharp, it's really great. Especially here, we are at the .NET uh, developer conference. Uh, it's really, really powerful. Um, on the other hand, uh, if I would just like uh, develop a simple console application, I would probably, you don't probably have to use Nuke, you can just use like the MS build, which is um, being run as standard inside your IDE. So it's best for a complex solution with several components. It's highly customizable. Uh, and it, uh, if you get like very specific uh, build requirements, it's really great to use Nuke. And it's easy to incorporate into your build pipelines. Uh, another benefit, which I haven't like talked that much is that you can actually create uh, a, a NuGet file of uh, uh, like declaring your builds, and you can share it among projects and team members. Uh, you can install that NuGet file, uh, run it, and like all the builds across uh, different projects and team members will be exactly the same. So that was what I wanted to say. Any question? You can contact me on LinkedIn. My name is Per Dahl Thank you. <laughs>